Hi guys, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bugger Designs, and I've got a fun Lucky Clover project for you. This week over on my blog, I'm featuring this great stamp set. It had a punch, it sold out like that, but I've got five projects this week on my blog that shows you how to use a stamp set without the punch. We don't have to have the punch. It's great, but we don't have to have it. Today's project is a little treat. Um, inside is something you may never have seen. It's a pistachio Kit Kat. Um, I was roaming around on Amazon, as I do, um, sometimes looking for fun treats, and I found the pistachio Kit Kats. Did you know that Japan has a ton of flavors um, for Kit Kats? They do. And pistachio is one of my very favorite flavors. It's my favorite ice cream. It's the uh, flavor I get when we go to get Froyo. So I was super excited when I got these. Um, so I decided to make a little holder, and um, I think you're going to like it. I will link back to those Kit Kats on my blog if you want to get them. Um, I'm, I'm using another stamp called Layered Stripes. It's a background stamp, and we're going to use it to make this pattern on our holder. Okay, well, we'll start with that pattern. Um, I've got my Stamparatus ready to go, and I've got a, a half sheet of uh, Granny Apple Green. All right, I've just left my um, stamp on here so that we could just get it and go. I have it already from the last time I used it. Um, so we're gonna ink this in Granny Apple Green ink and stamp it on Granny Apple Green cardstock. Now, I love to use my background stamps with my Stamparatus because it just makes it so much easier to handle. A big stamp like that um, is, is hard for me to handle and to get an even impression. Um, when you use a Stamparatus, you can, you know, lay it down and then open it up. And if you missed a spot, you can lay it back down and push where you missed. Um, but you can also re-ink. So I feel like we need, it's not solid enough. So I'm gonna ink it up again and lay it down again, and it'll be in the exact same spot. Oh yeah, that looks good. All right, now the holder itself is actually a die from the de uh, Desert Detail Dies, this one right here. Um, and I'm just gonna cut, I think you can get two out of here, if I remember correctly. But we'll just do one for the sake of the video. Put that right there. I'll save that space for later. Do another one. Lay that down. And run it through. And there you go. All right, now grab your Simply Scored. And we're just going to put some score lines on either side of that center. So you can see on my assembly scored, I took a Sharpie and drew it down the six inch line. I use that all the time um, to center things like this. So I want this section here in the middle to just be half an inch. So I'm gonna go over here to six and a fourth, make a score line, and then back to five and three fourths and make a score line. That way, when I fold it in, we're gonna have a half inch section to hold our pistachio Kit Kat, just like that. I mean, it's really easy. So now I'm gonna take my hole punch and I'm gonna punch a hole on both sides. And then we'll get, I've got two ribbons I'm using. I've got my um, gold shimmer ribbon, I believe. I don't wanna give you the wrong name, yeah, shimmer. All right, I'm just gonna take a piece and I'm gonna run it through these holes like this. One thing you can do if you're worried about the Kit Kat slipping out is to put um, either a dimensional or glue dot on the back of it and kind of stick it down to the back. Dimensionals, I think, are a little bit stronger than glue dots, so you can always do that if you're worried about it falling out. I don't think it'll fall out because I tied mine pretty tight, but you can always add that. All right, now I'm gonna take my block and just set that down there. And now uh, this is a Parakeet Party ribbon. It's not the exact same color, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm gonna take it, actually, you know what? I'm gonna double it. I'm gonna fold it in half so that I have two pieces 
I'm gonna slide it under there. That block is holding those two pieces of ribbon and so that, because I don't have a third hand to hold them, hold them down, it's my third hand. All right, so tie that pretty tight. And then we can get rid of that block. We're just using these two pieces of ribbon. Well, okay, let me cut this off. You're using these two pieces of ribbon as one. You're pretending like you just have one. And it's gonna make your bow fuller. Oh my gosh, I'm all thumbs today. Okay, third time's a charm, right? All right, let's make sure we've got that. We wanna get that pretty tight. Boy, you guys, this is gonna go on the blooper reel for sure. All right, here we go. Let's try this again, tight there. And it's early in the morning. I think that's probably the problem. I'm not quite awake. Sure, 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 sure. We'll blame it on that. All right, so get that and then just kind of follow the, the direction the ribbon wants to go. I always find it kind of wants to flip over and then slide that down. Take your scissors. I made this look way more complicated <laughs> than it is. All right, there. Now, you can pull those apart like that, make them tight. And there's your ribbon. I promise it's not as complicated as I just made it look. Now, let's make our little tag. Um, I've got basic white here and I'm gonna stamp this clover and we're gonna stamp off because we don't want it to be too dark. I'm gonna do this in granny apple green. So stamp off over here and then stamp right there so it's light. Now we're gonna emboss the sentiment in gold. So take your embossing buddy and remove any of the static that might be there. And stamp this, good luck, right over it. I know you can't see it, don't worry. It's there, it's just clear. Put that gold on there and there you have it. So make sure all the little granules are gone because anywhere that you see the granules, they will turn shiny, they will stay. Of course, they're gonna stay where you don't want them. All right, let's hit it with a heat tool for a few seconds. And there you got that. Got it, isn't that cute? Now, did you know Stampin' Up! has new online exclusive products? They've brought their circle punches back. We got mad because they took our circle punches out of the catalog and they said, okay, okay, we'll bring them back. They're online. So if you need a good circle punch, I recommend you go look online. This is the one and three fourths. There we go. You know, I hope that's the right size. It looks kind of big. Let's see. Oh yeah. All right. Now I have cut out ahead of time with my layering circle dies, a gold shimmer scallop circle. Isn't that shimmer so pretty? I'm going to layer that there and then I'm going to add some dimensionals here and we're done. Now think about where you could use these treats. Good luck. Yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day, but I think good luck can be used anywhere. I, as a teacher, our PTA would always put little treats in our mailbox at school um, on important days. And so like a state testing day, that might be a good one. Um, or the first day of school, that might be a good one. Or in your office, if somebody is, I don't know, interviewing for a new position, keep these in your drawer and uh, hand them out whenever they are needed. All right. I hope you guys like this. Click the link here on my blog. Hop back over to, click <laughs> the link here on YouTube Hop back over to my blog where I have a free PDF, all the measurements and supplies, as well as two other Lucky Clover projects. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.